when in actual fact you were right but they were denying this all this time and now the FOI has come out we were right but that's too bad because we've now lost everything and it's later down the track the loves are now leasing back the restaurant they used to own and trying to rebuild the business the years of phone problems were bad enough but the stress of fighting Telstra has wreaked a devastating personal toll we have always had a very good reputation and name and I don't know how we'll ever be able to get that back and it just goes on. Our family is just torn apart. I have not seen a daughter of mine for three years. My son can no longer live with us because of the stress levels in our household. And there are now calls for a Senate inquiry into Telstra's behaviour. After the break, we'll see how the corporation tried to influence politicians to prevent that happening. I think Telecom think they're bigger than Parliament. And if you're bigger than Parliament, they must think they're bigger than Australia. Despite lengthy arbitration and even an investigation by the Ombudsman, which resulted in a public rebuke, many of Telstra's victims believe justice won't be done until a full Senate inquiry has been conducted. But as we've discovered, Telstra wants to avoid that at all costs. And the 1995 Telstra Small Business of the Year is Ken Bio Queensland. The Small Business Awards in Melbourne and a chance for Telstra to brush up its somewhat tarnished image. Telstra sponsored the award, and the guests had a rare chance to see the corporation's chief executive, Frank Blount, in the flesh. We deal in Telstra with more small businesses, I suspect, than anyone else in Australia. Blount's message is that Telstra might be big, but they do care. This is not just words, ladies and gentlemen. We believe we've got to be responsible corporate citizens. Has it ever been Telstra's policy in any way to try to... Uh, to put pressure or persuade the, the people putting together reports to alter those reports or change them in any way at all? Definitely not. At all, in any way, shape or form? There was one letter in respect of the Peoples and Library report which you, you, may, you may be about to raise. We are indeed. Coopers and Librand were commissioned by Telecom to write a report on the handling of the COD cases which turned out to be highly critical. For Telecom, that was unacceptable. This letter from the group managing director said, I believe it should be pointed out to Coopers and Librand that unless this report is withdrawn and revised, their future in relation to telecom may be irreparably damaged. Well, How can you explain or justify that sort of an attitude from a senior management person? What I can say is that Coopers and Librand went on with a very strong and close relationship with Telstra and developed new complaints management and fault management procedures which are now in place throughout the corporation. Well, I'm, I'm sure they did, but of, of much greater concern, obviously, to the millions of Telstra customers is this kind of a corporate attitude from one of the senior management people. How can it be justified? Well, it, it's not appropriate for me to speak on that, John, at this stage. Was anything ever said to Mr Campbell about this? Was he ever carpeted by senior John? I'm not aware of the circumstances of, of that particular case. It was... Uh, it was before I was involved in these particular matters, so I can't deal with it with this day. Is it a commercial, is it, is it rather an acceptable way for a management person to act? John, I have no knowledge of this. It was before I was involved with this process. But you, you acknowledge that you did know about it, you were aware of it before I actually wrote it out. I was aware of the existence of the letter. That was all I was aware of in respect. But Mr Campbell is still in this position as a group managing director. I mean, is that an acceptable way for somebody in that position? Or well, act on a commercial basis, right. you should perhaps address it, Mr. Campbell. Well, we'd certainly like to address it, actually. What about you? Have you ever attempted to influence the situation in any way at all? In respect of... Uh, well, in the, just the process of the, of the cut cases and the arbitration and so on? Certainly not, John. In fact... But that's not what these documents reveal. When an independent arbitrator, Gordon Hughes, was trying to sort out some of the customer's disputes with Telecom, an executive wrote in an internal memo my course, therefore, is to force Gordon Hughes to rule on our preferred rules of arbitration. That executive was Steve Black. Force Gordon Hughes? 